connected. Uh, I think we're back. It may have booted up. Oh, nope, there it went. Hello? Yep. I am having substantive internet connectivity issues tonight. I don't know why. Um, nobody in my house is using the internet for anything, and even when they do, I've never had this problem streaming before. Might be a time to call Spectrum since they increased our cost per month this month. Uh, With that uh, increase, you get a degradation of service. Seems to be. Seems to be. And yet, what will I do otherwise? Like, the other server and, like, the other provider that reaches us actually says we can't provide you know, what you want. So well, We can do it, but it'll suck. Yeah, we can give you a service, but it'll be half what you're supposed to get or that you want to get. Anyway, all right. So where we last left off, as I recall, was we were talking about where did Ben appear on the prime material plane here. Um, and well, and he, I was I was jumping into the crimes, and you said, wait, let's. I have this thing that might lead into that. Well, it may lead into it, or you could start with oh, the crimes. Yeah, yeah. However you want about, to do that. Yeah, so... It could easily be that Ben came through in Crimson Witch, and so doesn't hasn't really been a lot of other places. I think that he would have started like immediately on getting there would have, and actually I kind of like that that he hasn't been other places, but he immediately when getting there sort of went to his his sort of training and his fallback and started compiling information. Okay. About Crimson Witch and about the area around it and about what's going on. So while he hasn't been places, he knows a lot about it. Okay. So uh, the the first thing then, this will be a nice lead in, is that Ben has observed that there are people dredging the lake of Comston Loch. And wizards have started showing up on the shores. Like washing up from the dredging? Yep. No. <laughs> oh man, that's so much better than what I came up with. The whole lake was full of dead wizards. Dead wizards, yeah. <laughs> I might still man, use that. They gotta clear out the wizards again. Uh, I might still use that, but in a different way. Uh, but you are. Oh, the damn drain keeps getting clogged with wizards. It's their hats. They point and right now. And the hair. And the hair, yeah. <sighs> Yeah, it's it's that's why we have a lock there. Um, it's matted down. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if damn it, if we're gonna live together, you have to clean your hair out. Um, no, it's uh, it's uh, that's I think probably the maybe the key in that that Ben will have for our opening adventure is that something exciting has been found at the bottom of Camston Lock. Okay. Um. And uh, he also has made some criminal connections because he has uh, a contact and connections to a criminal network. So I I see that you uh, typed in the Tiltify link there. I did. I threw that up. Because just, you know, origi originally we had talked a little earlier today in our Discord server about how you need, well, you don't need help with this, but it would sure be fun if somebody... Maybe kicked in a little something oh, there. We don't have a link. We this, don't course. because we decided we didn't want <laughs> we to do it. We were just going to talk about it. I figured I'd throw it I know. It. I turned it off because we stopped wanting to invite, you know, like we didn't have it as a rolling open we'll invite. for Rando Calrissian. Yeah, we don't. Well, on top of that, I think that we're botted up here with Robin, who is probably driving back from work. And yeah, we have zero people listening that's not true chris jones it says chris is listening but it it doesn't count him as a human chris what's going on here i show three i show three oh uh, i now. probably have a problem i i mean i'm having so many internet issues um but in any case if you are if you're listening what a bot would say chris i am Josh here i live i live <laughs> all right what we need we need i mean if Chris Jones names your bad guy, he's gonna have britches at the end of his of of your criminal contact. He's gonna be like something. Well, maybe not because Chris Jones is playing in this game. That's true. So there's already a britches. He's already have, a britches. We can't have a pair of britches. Ha <laughs> ha! 
small britches. Maybe it's one of Chris's relatives, because that's actually what his storyline is, is he's come to Crimson Witch looking for his relatives. Yeah. Crimson Witch or Crimson Bridge? Ooh. But would it maybe not be interesting if your criminal contact was his relative? <laughs> Could be. Yeah. So the only the only idea that I have for that is the criminal contact is someone that Ben has hired as muscle before. Okay, so he's muscle. Yeah. yeah. Which doesn't mean he's not, you know, doesn't have other qualities as well, but he is or he she they whoever this contact is uh is uh strong and capable in a fight. And I have two mindsets with that. When you when people say hired muscle, I mean obviously there are a couple character classes that come to mind, which is a barbarian and fighter. But I thought it might be interesting to lean even rogue with that, too. A very yeah. strong rogue. Mm -hmm. um, but let's let's build this, this cat out um, a little bit. So we've got, and we're going we're gonna to run maybe a slight bit long tonight because we've had so many uh, internet connection issues and started oh, a we little didn't late. Start until yeah. quarter after. So uh so let's let's uh well is there, let's talk a little bit more about Ben first actually. Um yeah. Ben what's Ben's relationship with his patron? Is it positive? It's like a like there the patron is sort of a decent boss okay like much very much a, a employee employer relationship okay. but it's not negative okay. um he wants to he wants to to do her bidding um in his own way like he's not controlled he's not told what to do maybe he's more of an independent contractor in that regard um you know he sets his own hours but okay. uh but he does want to serve them. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that he, de he genuinely enjoys the quest for secrets and he knows that that's what, what the patron wants too. Okay. So the relationship that, that'll help me out because I mean, of all the character classes, really, honestly, warlock comes with the best, it's just so easy to build a story around a warlock character. Sure. You sure. Know, you love your patron, you hate your patron. Your patron tells you to do something, you either hate him for doing it or you love him for wanting you to do it, and you can push on yeah. the party very easily through the patron relationship. So Which... I think that a good majority of the servants of the Queen of Darkness are warlocks because it's a very uh, reciprocal relationship in that they they go garner the secrets for the queen and the queen then exchange in exchange gives them power when you first described that um i had this and it's not a great um analogy but i sort of had because you called her the queen of uh the queen of shadows i kind of like uh i'm, I'm kind of playing around with queen of secrets kind of thing as well um yeah but uh and all the warlocks it's a bad analogy, but almost as drones. They're going and collecting the food that feeds the queen. Um, but not drones or, or because they have, because they have agency. Yeah. And yes. so and even yes. worker bees don't have any agency. So it's not a great analogy. But the... and I think that she likes the ones that exercise their agency more because they're the ones who are more able. They get the juicier secrets. <sighs> Like I'm sure that there are members of that court who are just they're gonna go out and they're just gonna do it and they're gonna punch the clock on a nine to five and they're gonna get the secrets they have to and that's it. But the exciting ones are the ones that like what Ben wants to be are like I'm gonna I'm getting these secrets for me and for you. For no reason other than we keep saying queen and you've said you're not married to that. Yeah. I'm but... I'm I'm drawing on that because of the the Fey Queen of uh, Air and Darkness. Right, and I and um, I and I love that, but I I kind of want to mess with it a little bit 
and I bet you do too. Um, uh, I'm not averse to the idea. Because we've had a respectful way. Yep. No, you you and (laughs) you and I have had some conversations about the fact, you know, about gender is meaningless. Yep. And it is. Um, I'm wondering how Ben would identify being an alien creature. There's no, there's no, be no typical necessarily reasons to be. Uh, ben presents most of the time as a very handsome man. Okay. Um, sort of, uh, sort of darker complected, um, sort of like Mediterranean. Okay. Um, uh, very, very dark brown eyes, uh, dark hair. Um, I think kind of think Ben Barnes from uh, Shadow and Bone, the the Darkling. Got him. Got him. Oh, um, that's a cool cat. Um, and that's sort of what I'm seeing most of the time. Now okay. with the undead, which I'm skinning as reskinning as the the School of Shadow, you have your form of dread. Yeah. Which is a few times a day you manifest sort of your patron's power, and in that he just becomes a creature of shadow. Uh, and like shadows just from him. Uh, again, I, I hadn't thought of it previously, but much like Shadow and Bone, when the Darkling uses his, his shadow to just like, it pours out of him uh, when he creates the rift. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Um, or I think I do anyway. Which I really like also because I anticipate, I plan to play Ben as very amiable. Like people will, will generally will genuinely like him most of the time, but every once in a while he gets real dark. Shit goes dark. Okay. And so the the image that I used for the uh, the character art on D and D Beyond is this pure shadow f- figure. Okay. By shadow, do you mean negative space, like black, or are there features discernible in the shadow? Not much. Yeah. My most features fade into the shadow, I think. Um, and, and I really like the art that I found, which is, and it's, I, I don't know the artist, so I don't want to like throw it on the screen, no, screen no, too much. Right, but, yeah. uh, but has these, the only thing that's really visible are the eyes that sort of light up in there. Okay but otherwise sort of tendrils of shadow that just sort of billow out. The way that, that I'm picturing this, when I'm, like, you're, the way you're describing it, uh, I have, like, this sort of... Ben goes not into to photo negative. Ben goes into true black, except the eyes. Well, and what I see is, like, all the natural shadows in his features deepen until they just obscure everything. And it, so it, it sort of, when it, when that form activates, it it's a, a, not an immediate, like, snap, it's there. It's like all the shadows just deepen and then spread out. Like, okay. When I, when I think of, like, cinematically how that's been shown in movies, the one that I don't like and so I'm hoping this isn't what you're thinking, <laughs> is one where Galadriel becomes the Dark Queen and goes basically photo-negative in the movie. No, I want... No, I... Uh, I I was thinking more dark, more light is fleeing. Like... Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah that's, um, that's much more what I'm thinking. Um, Because that's like they just move the, the light into a different place so the shadows feel weird. The shadows don't become strange. The shadows cover everything. Right. Yeah. I. Like, he could be in direct sunlight. If he activates that suddenly, he's just shadow. And and there's nothing there to cast it, but it's and because, shadow. Because the sun, it, it's almost like he's backlit and everything goes blackish. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. I, the reason I'm, like, p- like, picking up on this is because, like, at some point you might run into you know, your patron, and what would the other people be like? Mm-hmm. And I would like to describe this and 
Um, it won't be early on because, boy, that would be grim. Yeah, that would that would be a lot. I like that you chose to to show up in Crimson Witch too because it's it's hard to explain why people would be first level if they've been like going through hardships for all the you know like yeah. uh so that that actually helps out. Um, so um, there was one other. Th- what were we getting to that I just kind of lost? I got so excited about the imagery that I lost track of what I was actually hoping to get at with that. Um, darn it. I don't know. Oh, no, we need to get back to you've been in Crimson Witch for how long? Uh, long enough that you've got a guy that you know you can count I'd on say, like, as maybe muscle. Maybe a few weeks. But you've got a guy that you can mm-hmm. call on who you've so, so I say guy. Maybe it's not a guy. Um, yeah, and I don't. It, and that's one of the things that'd be great to get. You know, I, if and Chris Jones should throw out any ideas he's got. But if he's the only one watching, we have so much bot going on in here. But Chris Jones, should his muscle, what would, but like, I don't know. I kind of like the idea of you having somebody who presents feminine. As your muscle, um, yeah, just to subvert a trope, <laughs> Christian. What? <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna say that Ben's contact in the criminal underworld is presents female. Is it, it presents as a woman? What kind of muscle? What kind of underworld muscle is this? Uh, just just looking for ideas, Chris Jones. What kind of person would this be? Um. And also, it's a small town, so they can't be like a total. They can either be somebody who hides in plain sight, or they've got to have a brain in their noggin. They also can't be super powerful because Ben's been able to hire them, and he's level one. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking no more than, you know, like a basic bandit who has connections to bigger people. Mm hmm. Now, ideally, it would be somebody who would potentially gain in power as we go along, because I would love to have the opportunity to hire them again at some point. But I love, I love having NPCs grow with the, with the party. I love actually there being an NPC that also there's some trust built in, at least mm-hmm. with one member of the party. Everybody else might think you're you're. And Chris, well, we were... and we are talking about a criminal. Yeah, it's a criminal. <laughs> yeah, but we're also talking about. Uh, Chris Jones's character is wanting to reclaim his barbarian heritage and yeah. seek, you know, seek his family to wreak revenge on the world. Um, Winston's character is a lifelong criminal, <laughs> uh, and uh, Percy's character is trying to get out of influence from criminals. So. Uh, there's a lot of criminality already built into this game. Yeah, I'm for it. I'm very excited. I am very excited for this one. I think it's going to. I think this is going to be a great group to to do all kinds of shady deals stuff. I'm I'm planning Irvikale to be like straight heroic, and I'm planning Donna Cam to be super shady. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I guess what what I Oh, I, I would say that that whoever this person is, we'll say she because you're you you, and I think that's great. Um, that she's somebody that that Ben trusts implicitly, and would like to think that she trusts him implicitly. Why as well. Why does Ben trust her implicitly after being there for three weeks? I think you have shit on her. No, I think that okay. uh, that maybe I don't have any of her secrets yet. Um, is she a but cultist? I think that I think that maybe Ben got in over his head, and and she or they two of them got in over their head, and they working together, they got out of it, and like like to the point that like seriously over their heads, and it's surprising that they made it out. Well, taking a little bit of Winston's story from the other week. What if one of these major, like, let's say, a cliff chasing, um, 
family house was in there. You guys ran afoul of it, and you talked your way out of it together, and you've sort of bonded over it. Kind of like the Cyberpunk 2077 thing we were watching, um, mm -hmm. with the, the two characters there, and you both talked your way out of it and managed to just find enough commonality where you're siblings in arms. Yeah, um, yeah, I I like that. Um, although I a little a little bit of talking and a little bit of fighting our way out because okay. I I want there to be more of like there was mortal danger there as well as like maybe getting caught. Maybe there was a double cross involved. Sure. And so maybe we had a third partner or a third uh, uh yeah a third partner who. And she pummeled the boat. shit out of that guy in front of the cliff chasing agent, which showed that you guys were okay and on the up and up, even though you were planning to rook them both. I think that sounds great. Okay. And and Ben was able to lie enough to convince them that yeah. that guy was the thief that was trying to, to rob them, and, and that's how we got out of it. And you so two... it took both of us playing to our strengths to do it. <laughs> awesome. I think I'm going to play into her being a monk. But a street brawler monk. I don't know. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. It's just a, a pummeler. A, a very... And I'm also... Although Winston is a monk, so that might be... Stepping on toes a little. No, 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 no. Uh, I think I'll, uh, we'll we'll see how that plays out. Um, but I think uh, this monk might be. Um... There's also the 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 hand to hand brawler um, fighting style for uh, fighters, barbarians, and things. Okay. Yeah. Dawson's used that quite a bit, and, and it's been fun. Okay. And then well, you get away from the idea that they're a monk. That, monk, that just because monk they punch. There's a lot of other stuff going on. Yeah. Fighter. Female. Anybody got a name idea, or are we going to have to do the thing where I go to fantasy name generator? I don't. I and intentionally didn't. Let's see what we got going on here. Yeah, so the monk un or the the fighter fighting type is unarmed fighting. Done. That's what we're gonna. Yeah, unarmed. and that, I think that that's available to um to barbarians as well, but maybe not. Maybe rangers. I think they're the ones with the fighting styles. They are. I don't remember if barbarians get a fighting style option or if they're just like, you got a big thing and you hit people with it. I have played barbarian not nearly as often as I've played fighter. I play fighter a lot. Um, yeah, but barbarian I, doesn't have the fighting style. I, I was going to say, that. I don't think they have that. All right. What kind of name should we... Fantasy... Um, the only fighter has the unarmed ranger doesn't get that oh I thought they did they get fighting styles but that's not one of the options oh okay and it's the expanded options I think from Xanathar but well they added the unarmed one for fighters I don't see it on the list for rangers which I... is mostly irrelevant to what we're doing but would you have a origin like uh ethnic not ethnic but uh background species idea for this person they could be i i've i've tended to want the majority of um ervocale to be mostly human but we're in a more urbane area of the world here you don't uh, have any strong feelings um i was urbane, picturing this I mean... person as human but they don't Absolutely don't need to be. Okay. Um, ben presents as human. Okay. Or at least human enough. Much like the air, air mansion. Mostly, look, mostly human. Try, try to look human. And like yeah. Dusty, Dusty uses weights in her hair to keep it from floating. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. I chose Hobbit Name Generator. I don't have anything as good as Arcus Tud right out of the bat. But I, <laughs> I do sort of like, and I'm not, I don't like it for this. I just think Vanessa Burroughs makes it just sounds like a poor name. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, Mimosa Glutton Belly is sort of fun, but not what we're going for. Um, uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's uh, fitting. Mimosa Glutton Belly. Well, that, mimosa doesn't work for that. Mimosa feels light and airy to me, and then you got Glutton Belly. It does. I I like this first name of Darby. Um. I also. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit get female names one more time. Uh. Nope. 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 I don't like it. I'm skipping Hobbit names. They they they're just I I love those kind of names but they're not doing it for me. Let's Let me put go, Darby in a pocket though. We could we could Dar use that. Let's let's keep Darby in the pocket, and then we have a whole bunch of names that have titles. So I did Bandit Name Generator and hit female names, and I sort of enjoy Sydney the Weasel, <laughs> um, but. Uh, PC, that doesn't sound like somebody that's muscle. No, it doesn't. Maybe, do they have a thug name generator? Let's see. Or muscle. Oh, muscle. Nope. Sure don't. Um, I do like Darby, though. So let's hold on to Darby, and then let's hit Something a little like maybe pirate. Pirate names. Darby the Wall Seth. <laughs> That's not good. I don't like the nicknames in here. Although Ethel. Weirdo Clive is kind of fun. <laughs> Hi, they call me Weirdo. Um, but not not what I want. Um, right, what uh, if we look at what if we look at Norse names? Norse, okay, go Norse. Like Viking names. Uh, Norse Raven names they have here, and then Viking. I'm sure they have somewhere. They have Valkyrie names. Valkyrie names. Let's see what we got here. If we keep Darby, I don't I know. Don't know if the Valkyrie names work. They I'm don't. Those and thinking, they, I don't. I don't. I. I. They're not. They're not speaking to me. What about elemental names? Well, maybe maybe there's an elemental name that that Ben keyed in on because his last name his surname is umbrius which is uh, shadow play on umbral uh, yeah shadow shadow in latin yeah it's in the penumbra uh so uh, shadow um penum is uh darby penum uh ooh darby a cleep a clipe i don't know how they pronounce this here um, but they, uh, well, that's uh, the great thing. We can pronounce it however we want. Yeah. I like, I like Darby a Clipe. That's kind of fun. I could, I could, a Clipe, I could mess with that a lot. But let's see if I get a different shadow here. Anique, Darby Anique means shadow. Oh, Darby. Well, I, the one I just, the one I just got is Valios. That's the one I just got too. Darby Valios. <laughs> Done. That's pretty good. That's Done. Pretty good. Dar okay, so her name is Darby Valios. So upon first meeting, Ben clocked the name because it's a name that's used where he's from. Yeah. Um, 
And she's not. Like the, she has no connection to it. It's just a name. It's just a name. But he immediately clocked it, and so paid attention to her, and then, and then they they got into the shit. I I like this idea, and I might work this in, but we'll we'll let it happen more organically than this. I'm just gonna throw this out here. Is Darby also has a partner? And that partner might be connected to Chris Jones's character, and I think that might help us tie some things together. But sure. I, I'm, I like, I like this, this, this story we just came up with you and Darby, talking your way out of trouble with the Clip Jason clan, um, and fighting, and so I, talking so and fighting I'm your way out. I'm picturing Darby. So I went to high school with a, a girl whose last name was Darby. And I immediately thought of her when we saw the name. And she had really tight blonde curls that like made her hair huge. Um, and I kind of liked that idea too. Okay. Because it seems incongruous with, with Shadow. Particularly with, with Valios and it seems a dark like a like a like a stark contrast to Ben. Maybe there's a bit of lightness and happiness that's that she has that is also attractive to you. Yeah. In a way. Okay. Um, I have decided that my character's up for anything. I'm looking for my grandfather's village tribe, but how I get to our point of interest is super flexible. Yeah. Yeah. I th We had talked about you traveling east looking for your tribe, and I think, I think one of the things we're going to have happen, Chris, is... Uh, right out of the gate, you're gonna be hope hopefully running into somebody who knows your grandpappy. Uh, and that person might be somebody that Ben knows. But that just so I can I can do a meet cute for the beginning yeah. adventure. I'm trying to tie people together now. Uh, and certainly it's gonna start in a tavern, and Percy's character is going to be trying to hustle some, some cash on the stage and Winston's character is on the on the hideout because there was a cliff chasing situation that just occurred and he knows what just went down and he knows he's in trouble and uh this total rube druid from the north will have just walked in as well and that's well it'll start in a tavern which is totally cliche but i have an idea for starting this out with the first thing we're going to do is roll initiative so, uh, it, 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 I think it'll be exciting. Uh, so, um, yay. All right. I think, I don't know that, I mean, we actually added a lot to the world, um, yeah. the cosmology tonight. We didn't actually add any new points on the map and that's okay we added to the oh, cosmology. We, we added to the cosmology and we yep. added to the the minutia too yep for because sure we've created while well, we started to create a, a little criminal network in, in, in tiny witch, little crimson which witch i love yep yeah no and so it, i it, think i think next steps there are going to need to be to flesh that network out a little bit and and i'm all for you doing that separately yeah because maybe ben doesn't yet know well I would like Ben to have learned something about who runs that. Well, let's talk about that quick. Um, I it's, don't know it's, that he's in with that network. It's a town of about a thousand. Yeah. And so they would, if there's a criminal network there, we know there's somebody from Cliff Chasen, which is looking for a merchant deal in there because that's the run-in you had. And then, what is the criminal network that Darby Valios is part of? Is she operating for another one of the houses that Winston named, or is it just a, a, a little side hustle? Not side hustle, I but a, a tiny operation. You know, at the risk of getting cliche with, like, Thieves Guild kind of thing, I think there's a small organization that, I mean, there's, like, we know we've got, a, we've got at least one fence in town. Yep. We've, got, we've got some hired muscle around. We've got you know, I I don't know. Maybe it, maybe somebody who deals cards in the tavern or like stuff like that. Like, oh, I like that too. There are 
there are there's there's always in a thousand people you've got you know you got maybe got 50 things. or so who are pretty shady okay but it's local it's local to crimson which maybe they stretch out they've got a couple contacts in the capital of blank yard they've got a couple contacts going east or west i really like that because i think ben would have it as his goal to ultimately run that organization and then take over and then expand well let's find out the name of that organization <laughs> what or organ if they even have one maybe they don't maybe they're just a bunch of thieves Maybe they're disorganized and looking for leadership. No, that's less. Well, I don't want. I mean, it's fun for for the game. Like, not everything's a. Uh, you know, you don't want to subvert every trope because games run well on tropes. Yeah. So there's already a leader. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't know who that is yet. Well, I think that because Ben's whole thing is information gathering. I'd like it if he knew something about them, even if he doesn't know who it is. No, I want you to know the name of the organization. Okay. Um, and I want you to know that it's a person who has a, a fun little pseudonym. So, the first... Yeah, I can get behind that. First thing I'm going to do is come up with... Let's see, I'm back in Fantasy Name Generator. and it's called I'm... The Sparrow. Done. I like that a lot. I, did, I don't know why, but I like it. Sparrow yep. is, is the name of the... The leader. The, oh, that's the leader. Okay. I thought that was the name of the guild. I like that, too. Oh, it could, um, it could be the organization, I guess. No, let's call the, the, the Sparrow the leader. And then the... the uh, what, is a, what is a group of Sparrows called? Um, a group of... I'm looking it up. Or the organization could just be the nest. They're called a knot, a flutter, a host, a quarrel, or a crew. And I like calling well, them well, a, a quarrel. A, a, the, the, the crew is two on the nose. Yeah, but th either the knot the quarrel is great. or the quarrel. And I think I'm gonna the 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 group is called the quarrel. Maybe they use both. Yeah. Maybe they have they maybe they have several names for what for their organization, and they are. Interchangeably, the quarrel, the knot, and there might be other names that come up. The host. Yeah. Or the flutter. I love it. Love it. Okay. Well, a flutter is a word that they use for, for pulling a job. They're on a flutter. Ah, oh, I like that too. <laughs> job is called the flutter. Sort of getting into the sort of Middle English thieves can't. Uh, a flutter is a word for their, their thievery. Nice. Perfect. All right. I'm going to have to brush up on my my Middle English Thieves Cant because it's so much fun. I think we have built a great deal tonight. I think we're reaching the conclusion of our conversation tonight online. I, there's going to be more that will happen offline, I imagine. Um, but if you're paying attention and you're playing in this game, I think our next step is to schedule our first online Navishla. So we have one last thing we need to cover. What's that? You mentioned earlier today that before the end of this we would have uh oh. fleshed out who can play in the Ramshackle Bivouac oh, and how that will be played. I didn't even give it any thought and I did say that that would happen. Uh so All right, you I'm throw you engaging throw out your that, legal brain on this. You'd thrown out that that sort of first dibs would go to the people who had donated. Uh, and then you said you don't want it to be pay to play. I get that, but I don't think it's a bad thing to say the first steps go to those who paid. Yep. Because for one thing, we only have a handful of donors. And you said you'd take seven players. So we still have seats left if all the people who've currently donated are, get one. And all the people who've currently donated aren't going to play. Some of them will. Okay. Then but I don't, I think, I think it's worth it to say if you donated and you want a seat, you get first dibs. I, I would say right of first refusal. Yeah. Um, so that's that's what we'll do. If you've donated okay, let me let me tell you what's gonna happen in this adventure. Um it will be for third level players, it will be five E. It will take place that you are in a Ramshackle bivouac 
which is a chain of taverns in Navishla. It's I actually will show you where they are based on the Navishla map. Oh, not by doing that, I won't. Um, well, I'm for that. I want. I can't wait until our characters show up in a different ramshackle bivouac. <laughs> but you recognize it because they hang the same weird tchotchkes on the walls. That's right. It's so the uh, the ramshackle bivouacs are up here on the north part of the Keeling Sea. This is I haven't named this country yet, but it will ha it will be a, I will have all of this done before we play this game, and it's basically where your knight goes to die. If you are still in a ramshackle bivouac at two two, the bar that's open latest. Yes, but if you're yeah. there, your knight has gone awesome. You're mourning less so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this ramshackle bivouac. Somewhere around two in the morning is beset by wave after wave of invaders that are heralding the coming of a giant beast. So it will be wave after wave, and then you have to fight at the end the uh, the kaiju echo spider. But it will be one of those defend defend the house type yep. adventures. So one map. That sounds fun. Five people, wave after wave. Lots of stuff in the Ramshackle Bivouac for you to improvise and do with as you will. And we will have a four-hour game based on that. If you've donated, you get first dibs. You will have right of first refusal. I will be posting... Um, I, I hope to run this mid-November, so... Um, I will be posting a deadline for those who have donated to refuse to play. Bear in mind that we have a table game mid-November, so... Yeah. I... Yeah, I'll figure it out. Maybe it'll be early. I don't like it, plan to write this if we're gonna... Yeah, it'll be, it'll be early December probably is when it's gonna be. Actually, no, thank you for bringing that up. I have a lot to write between here and then. Um, but, but early December we'll have this game, and I don't think this will be hard to write. It's a map, and I'm gonna have to just come up with waves of shit, and you guys are gonna put lots of stuff in it. And I'm gonna yes and the shit out of this because it's gonna be crazy cakes. So, but I'm excited we met the goal and thank you Ed for kicking really the donation uh, drive off and uh, well, it had to get rolling. It had to get rolling, and we we raised thus far and hopefully we'll actually accumulate a couple more before we close this thing. Um, but we've raised two hundred fifty dollars to to help. Which is not nothing, you know. Um, we we do fundraisers every month, so you know, asking people to donate every month and having a limited community, it's not nothing to to get to 250 bucks. Uh, if you're seeing this on YouTube or anywhere, and you think that you want to help with that, yeah, and it give did, us a follow because that would help a ton. Every every month we we try to pick a, a a goal to raise money for that we think is important. It's part it's right on the right on the tin there with the role play give. Um, and so if, uh, if you do see this, you can always donate to these causes. None of them, we, we don't pick ones that are going to shut down in a month typically. Um, so, you know, uh, last month we raised $130 for Planned Parenthood. You can still give to Planned Parenthood, please do. Um, and, uh, the month before that we raised, uh, 200 bucks for NAMI, uh, the National Alliance for Mental, uh, Mental Illness Awareness. I keep getting that wrong, but. It's for helping uh, uh, fund initiatives towards uh, national or towards mental uh, health. Oh, God, I fuck this up every time uh, with NAMI. Uh, but basically, it's helping out uh, with, with funding initiatives towards alleviating those who suffer with, not, with mental illness issues. Um, and, it, you know, it all goes towards good stuff that you can keep donating to, even if you're catching it late. I guess is what I'm saying. Rambling style. Um anyway, uh thanks Ed. I think I forgot, I think we did some pretty cool shit tonight. Um so excited. yeah. So um I'm also excited that Kaiwahi in the table game might be aware of Ramshackle Bivouacs having spent a lot of time on that sea. I would say we will roll a history check for Kaiwahi and she will have an <laughs> advantage on that roll. 
if if ever you want to know if there's a ram <laughs> god that might show up anywhere where ramshackle bivouac like like we're branching out we're gonna build one in Irvacale. kale yeah. yes yes and yeah i don't i don't think there's any downside to that um all right well we're gonna call it a night tonight uh thanks ed uh for joining us tonight and of course ed's on i say ed thanks for joining us tonight and you're on like everything we do um <laughs> but uh i'm the present i'm the present ed uh but like hemorrhoid you can't get rid of ah uh, no that would that would uh that would imply that we would want to um but on behalf of roleplay give on behalf of roleplay give roll some <laughs> dice play some games and uh, give of your time or treasure to the causes that are meaningful. Have a good night, y'all.